In this lesson, you're gonna learn the basics of trigonometry. We're gonna be talking about the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, as well as how to work with the angles in a triangle to find missing sides, or to work with the sides of a triangle to find missing angles. We're gonna be doing the sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse, as well as talking about the angle of elevation and angle of depression. So let's dive right in. The first thing we wanna talk about is, you know, what exactly is trigonometry? Well, if you look closely at the word, Trig refers to triangle, and metry refers to measurement, like the measurements in a triangle, whether it's the angles or the sides. So the first thing we wanna talk about are the trig ratios, also referred to as the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle. Now when we talk about a trig ratio, a ratio means you're comparing two quantities. And in this case, we're comparing two of the side lengths in a triangle. So when we talk about the sine ratio, we're talking about the ratio of the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse. If we're talking about the cosine, we're talking about the ratio of the adjacent side, okay, that's the side that's next to the angle, divided by the hypotenuse, the one that's across from the right angle. And then the tangent ratio is the ratio of the opposite side, the one across from the angle, divided by the adjacent side, the one next to the angle. Now you're probably saying, Mario, that's a lot to remember, and I completely agree with you. And that's why a lot of students, when they're learning trigonometry, the first thing they learn is this acronym, so ka toa And what exactly does that mean? Well, it means S for sine is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine <clears throat> is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So if you can remember, so ka toa, and just remember it's the second letter divided by the third letter, you'll have those ratios. Now we're gonna do examples with all these so you can get really good at it. And the first thing you wanna understand though, before I jump into an example is, say if you have a little triangle like this where it's a 30 degree angle and you've got a right angle, and here you have a larger triangle that has a 30 degree angle and this right angle. You probably learned in geometry that when you have two angles that are congruent to two angles, the triangles are what we call similar. And what it is is that one triangle is basically proportionally larger than the other triangle or, the, or proportionally smaller. And what happens is that if you're, let's say we're looking at the sine of this angle, sine is the opposite side, okay, the one across, divided by the hypotenuse. See how that ratio is one over two, one half? Whereas in this larger triangle here, the sine of 30 degrees is the opposite side three divided by the hypotenuse six. Well, three divided by six is the same as one divided by two. That's one half or 0.5. So that's really interesting when you're working with uh, similar triangles or a right triangle that has that same acute angle, the uh, corresponding sides are gonna be proportional. So those trig ratios are gonna be the same. So that's the real magic of trigonometry. But let's get into this first example, this introductory example. Say for example, we wanna find out the sine of angle A, the cosine of angle A, and the tangent of angle A. And one thing to notice is that when we talk about angles, we use capital letters. Whereas when we talk about the sides across from the angles, we usually use a lowercase letter. So this would be like side A, like a lowercase a. So what exactly is the sine of angle A? Well, the way I like to explain this is, pretend like you're standing at that particular angle that you're working with. That's your perspective. So if you say, hmm, sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So opposite means across, that's three, divided by the hypotenuse, that's the one across from the right angle, that's five. So the sine of angle A is three fifths. How about the cosine of angle A? Well, cosine we know is, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, see the ka? So adjacent means next to, that's gonna be four, divided by the hypotenuse, which is across from the right angle, five. Now some students go a little bit off the track here where they'll say, well, adjacent, isn't that this one here, isn't five adjacent? Adjacent in everyday language means next to, right? But this one, the five, is always gonna be the hypotenuse, it's always the one across from the right angle, so adjacent is gonna be the other side that's next to this angle, A. Now with tangent of angle A, we're doing TOA, so that's opposite over adjacent, that's gonna be opposite, which is three, divided by adjacent, which is four. Now, another thing that students sometimes like to do is as soon as they get the triangle and they're working with angle A, they'll just label opposite, and they'll write opposite here, adjacent, they'll write adjacent here, hypotenuse, hypotenuse. And then they can just use their SOKOTOA you know, acronym to help them with those ratios. 
Let's switch over to sine of angle B now. So here what we're doing is we're no longer over here, okay? We're standing at angle B, we're at this angle, and that's our perspective. So we say, what's the sine of angle B? Well, that's gonna be opposite, okay, the one that's across, so that's four, divided by the hypotenuse, that's one that's across from the right angle, five. How about the cosine of angle B? Well, cosine is adjacent, that's three, over the hypotenuse, that's across from the right angle, five. And what about the tangent of angle B? So tangent is opposite, that's four, over adjacent, that's the one next to here, which is three. Again, we don't wanna use the five, that's the hypotenuse. So again, if you can just remember, so ka toa, and just remember it's always the second divided by the third, you'll have those trigonometric ratios. So now let's get into some other example problems where you're given the angle and you wanna find the missing side. So everything that we've been working on in this lesson so far, this is right triangle trigonometry, meaning that you have a triangle with a 90 degree angle. There's other problems that you can do not involving a right triangle where we get into the law of sines, the law of cosines, which is different from just our regular sine and cosine. For number one though, we wanna solve for this missing side here, this X, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna position yourself at the angle, right? And then you say, well, what trig ratio, sine, cosine, or tangent, ties together this 23 degree angle, this opposite side four, and this hypotenuse X? And you only wanna have one unknown, one variable. If you have more than one unknown, more than one variable, you're not gonna be able to solve it. So in this case, we have, let's see, opposite, and hypotenuse, oh, opposite and hypotenuse, that's sine. So we say the sine of 23 degrees equals the opposite side, which is four, divided by the hypotenuse x. Now what you can do is you can think of this as sine of 23 divided by one, and now what we have is a ratio equal to a ratio, or a fraction equal to a fraction. This forms a proportion, and we can use the properties of proportions to solve. So one way to do this is you can interchange these on the diagonal. I could put x here and sine of 23 here. x divided by one is just x and we've got the variable by itself. But what I find is a lot of students, they just like to use that cross product property. They like to just cross multiply. So x times the sine of 23 equals four times one, which is four. Then to get x by itself, we're just gonna divide both sides by the sine of 23 to keep the equation balanced and we have x by itself. So now we're gonna to go to the calculator, and when you do these problems, you wanna make sure you go to your mode and make sure that you're in degrees, because you can see this angle is in degrees. So now we're gonna go four divided by the sine of 23 degrees, which comes out to, I'm just gonna to round to the tenths. This is about 10.2, and that's the length of this side uh, right here, the hypotenuse, and you got it. So let's go to another example, see if you can do this one, number two. So number two, we're trying to solve for this missing side here, y, but we have to ask ourselves what trig ratio, sine, cosine, or tangent ties together this angle, this side, and this side. Well again, remember you wanna position yourself at the angle. You wanna pretend like you're standing at the 16 degree angle, and then you say, this is the adjacent side, because you're next to, this one across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse, okay, that looks like ka, which is cosine. So we're gonna say the cosine of the angle, cosine of 16 degrees equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Now all we have to do to solve is we wanna get y by itself. So instead of dividing by 15, we're just gonna multiply both sides by 15. So we have 15 times the cosine of 16 degrees, which comes out to 14.4, and you've got that missing side. One last example, working with these side lengths, what trig function do you think ties together this angle, this side, and this side? Is it sine, cosine, or tangent? Well, again, let's position ourselves at the angle. We've got opposite and adjacent. So, oh, okay, opposite adjacent, that's toa, so this is the tangent. So we have the tangent of 32 degrees equals the opposite side, seven, divided by the adjacent side, z. And then again, we can use that uh, property of proportions where you can switch these on the diagonal or we can just do the cross product property. We'll just cross multiply. So z times the tangent of 32 degrees equals, so now we're just gonna divide by the tangent of 32 to both sides of the equation. And now we have z equals seven divided by the tangent of 32 degrees, which comes out to 11.2. Uh, 
and you found the missing side. So the next thing we want to do is we want to talk about how do you solve for when you don't know the angle, but you know the side lengths, and that's where the sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse come into play. Okay, number four, we're looking for this missing angle, x. So what we want to do is, same idea, you want to position yourself at the angle, and you say what trig ratio ties together the opposite side and the adjacent side, from this angle. Well, opposite and adjacent, we know that's TOA, so we're gonna say the tangent of x degrees equals the opposite side, which is three, divided by the adjacent side, which is eight. Now, the thing is, we wanna get this angle by itself, but we have tangent of x. How do we get rid of this tangent? That's where the sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse come into play. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tangent inverse of the left side, we're gonna take the tangent inverse of the right side, keep this balanced, these are inverses, they undo one another, and we get the angle now by itself. So x is equal to the tangent inverse of three over eight. So we're gonna to go to the calculator again now, and you'll probably notice right above the sine, cosine, tangent, you see the sine, and you've got that minus one, or cosine minus one, or tangent minus one, that means the inverse. So you wanna press that second key, I'm on a T84 here, so second tan inverse of three divided by eight. And that comes out to about 20.6 degrees. So here we solve for the angle. Uh, how about for number five? Same idea, we're trying to solve for angle Y now. Uh, we position ourselves at the angle and we say what trig ratio ties together opposite and hypotenuse. So that one's gonna be opposite and hypotenuse, that's so or sine. So we say the sine of angle Y equals opposite four over hypotenuse, which is 10. Now again, to get the angle y by itself, we have to get rid of the sine here. We wanna do the inverse. We're gonna take the sine inverse of the left side and the sine inverse of the right side. So we get y by itself now, and we're gonna to go to our calculator, sine inverse of four divided by 10, which comes out to an angle of 23.6 degrees. Last one, see if you can do this on your own. And after this, we're gonna do some uh, problems involving angle of elevation and angle depression, so more like word type problems or story problems. So what do you think, is this one gonna be sine, cosine, or tangent? Well, let's see, we position ourselves at the angle, we've got the adjacent side and the one across the right angle, which is the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse, that's cosine. So we've got cosine of angle Z equals adjacent, which is 14, over hypotenuse, which is 15. We want to get angle Z by itself, so we're going to take the cosine inverse of both sides, keep it balanced, right? So now we have angle Z by itself, and going to the calculator, cosine inverse of 14 over 15, that's a 21.0 degrees is that angle. Before we do number seven and number eight, these application problems with angle of elevation, angle of depression, if you're new to the channel, we're meeting for the first time. My name is Mario of Mario's Math Tutoring, and I'm a full-time math tutor. I work with students every day, and what I try to do is take what I learn working with students about what helps them to grasp these concepts the easiest and the quickest, and I incorporate them into these videos so that you can benefit from my math tutoring as well. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, check out more math videos on my Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel. Let's jump into number seven though. What I did is I've already taken the liberty of drawing this out for us just to kind of save space and save time. But say for example, you're trying to find the height of a, a tree. And my drawing's not perfect here. The tree's a little bit uh, crooked, but imagine this tree is a vertical straight up and down. And you walk back from the base of the tree 100 feet. You get out your protractor and you say, hey, that angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 62 degrees how can we figure out how tall that tree is without actually having to climb up the tree and measure it with a you know, measuring tape, right? Well, the first thing I wanna talk about though is you know, angle of elevation. When you think of elevation, it's like you're elevating or you're looking up. That's the angle that we're talking about right there. Whereas angle of depression, you're looking down from the horizontal, okay? So for example, if there was a bird up here and the bird was looking down at you, that would be your angle of depression right there. Not this angle, but the one down from the horizontal. This is the angle of elevation up from the horizontal. And if you remember from geometry, these are actually alternate interior angles and they're congruent. So if this is 62, this is 62. So that's something to kind of be aware of. But here we're trying to figure out the height. This is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. So which one's opposite and adjacent? That's TOA or tangent. 
So we say the tangent of 62 degrees equals h, which is opposite over adjacent, which is 100. All we have to do now is multiply both sides by 100, and we've got it. Let's see what that comes out to. See how tall this tree is. 100 uh, times the tangent of 62 degrees. A lot of times students will say, you know, Mario, you know, when are we ever going to use this? And, you know, trigonometry is really very useful. Um, so you can see we didn't have to climb that tree. We could just stand on the ground and we could get a pretty good estimate of how tall that tree is, 188.1 feet. Okay. So let's look at number eight now. This one is a little bit different. We're flying a kite and we let out all the string that we have. And we know it's a 300 foot roll of string. We measure that angle of elevation right up from the horizontal. We say that's a 70 degree angle. Okay. But we want to know how high is the kite actually above the ground, like straight down, okay? Well, of course we can't, you know, jump up here and put a measuring tape and measure that, right? So here's where we're using our triangles, our trigonometry, right? So what trig function do you think ties together this angle, this side, which is opposite, this side, which is hypotenuse, hmm, opposite and hypotenuse, that's so, or sine. So we're gonna say the sine of 70 degrees equals the opposite, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is 300. Now all we have to do is multiply both sides by 300 to keep it balanced, get that h by itself, and go to our calculator. 300 sine of 70 degrees is 280, I'm just gonna round, about 282 feet above the ground. If you like my teaching style and you wanna learn more about trigonometry, follow me over to that video right there where we dive into how to solve right triangles, meaning you're finding all the angles, all the sides. It's usually the next step when you're learning about trigonometry. So I'll see you over in that video.